Welcome back to Sammy J Reads. I'm Sammy and this is the place in which I read a book, I review it, and hopefully I save you from reading a terrible book. Before I start this review, I want to send another big thank you out to Peter V. Brett who found my review, who posted it, he enjoyed it, and I was just as amazed I would have never expected that you, the actual author, would have found it right after I had posted it. No way. He- What?! <gasps> oh! Oh my god! Oh! Oh my god! Okay, so, um, hmm. Where do I start? Uh, yesterday I posted my video on the Warden Man, and then turns out that Peter B. Brett saw it, and he really liked it, so he posted it, and <sighs> now everyone's watching it! They all really like it and they're all subscribing and what do I do? Oh, I, I should keep making more videos. Be, he, be, we could be friends. Peter be friends. I could be friends with one of my favorite authors. Oh my god. Okay. Well, I need to go tell everyone else now. So, uh, yeah. Okay. Thank you. I thanked you on Twitter. I thank you again. Uh. Yeah. If those of you who subscribed just last week because of Mr. Brett himself, uh, hey, what's up? I'm Sammy, totally. I probably came by, said thank you on your page, unless for some reason I couldn't comment. And yeah, I'll see you guys in the next couple weeks with some new book reviews, starting with today's, obviously. And yeah, so let's go ahead and get started with the next book review. This week's book review is on a childhood classic of mine, and it's a classic for anyone. It's got a famous movie musical, pretty much, already made after it. We're going to review The Wonderful Wizard of Oz. I don't know why this book says The Wizard of Oz, though, but it's actually The Wonderful Wizard of Oz, the book. The movie is just called The Wizard of Oz. The Wizard of Oz musical follows pretty closely to the story plot of The Wonderful Wizard of Oz. Young Dorothy Gale ends up getting swept away in her house by a cyclone and finds herself in the wonderful world of Oz in which she must find her way home and during that time she also has to defeat the Wicked Witch of the West. Once Dorothy sets off on her journey to find her way home, she encounters three new amazing characters that become her best friends. We meet the Scarecrow, who has no brains, the Tin Man, who has no heart, and the Cowardly Lion, who has no courage. Starting with Dorothy, she is actually a really good character. She's not the sort of middle teenage years that Judy Garland portrays in the film. She's actually about 11 or 12 and she's an orphan, so that's why she lives with her aunt and uncle. She's a lot more well-rounded. You don't really have much of a background story on her in the film like you do in the book. The Scarecrow is basically the exact same character as was in the film. He has no brains, so he would like to have some brains, have some knowledge. Boys go to Venus and girls go to Mars because they get more knowledge? I don't remember that rhyme. He actually does a lot more to help protect Dorothy. He does end up at one point killing, I think it's like 40 crows. It's a little bit darker. Next is the Tin Man. The Tin Man is my favorite character out of all of them. He's actually got a very sad story that he tells. He was once actually human and he was in love with this munchkin girl. I had a friend send me a video. It's like the short film that somebody made about the Tin Man basically and it's it's dark. It is dark but it's straight on true to the book. So I'm going to go ahead, I'll post that right over here. So yeah, click somewhere over here. Or if you don't want to click there, you can click on the link down below. Go check it out. It's pretty accurate. I would love to see whoever did this one short film do an entire wonderful Wizard of Oz film because I think they do a great job. The final friend Dorothy makes on her way to the Wizard of Oz is the Cowardly Lion. He never really deviates from what the movie portrays him as. He's cowardly. He doesn't have courage. He gets scared easily. And while I myself usually attach real quickly to feline characters and deem them my favorite character, the Cowardly Lion wasn't one of them. I was more attached to the Tin Man because I felt so sorry for him. So after Dorothy and her three new friends go and find the Wizard of Oz so then she can make her way home, the Scarecrow can get some brains, the Tin Man can get a heart, and the Cowardly Lion can get some courage, 
We have the point when Dorothy goes home after the entire incident where she misses a balloon and she doesn't know how she's going to get home. When she gets home, it comes to be that it wasn't a dream. The movie portrays it that she was knocked unconscious during the twister and it was a dream when she wakes up. In the book though, when she's taken away on the twister, she actually gets bored so she goes to bed. She takes a nap. And when she wakes up, she's in the world of Oz. So the biggest difference you have there is that Dorothy actually went to the wonderful world of Oz. It is a place, it's not a dream. And that's what I love the most about it. But this difference is not the only difference between the book and the movie. There are a lot, a lot of differences that the movie either left out, they changed for whatever purposes to get their audience to come view it and make their money. And in the book, it has a different outcome, it has a different outlook on things in the end, so it makes for a better read, in my opinion, that you don't have the exact same story. This is what's actually in the book. Aunt Em and Uncle Henry, they've never laughed, so whenever Dorothy would laugh, they were shocked. There are no farmhands! That's why when Dorothy comes back from Oz in the book, she's not coming back saying, Oh, you were in there, and you were there, and you were there. No, they weren't there. The Good Witch of the North is not Glinda. Glinda is the Witch of the South. The Munchkins are not little people. They're just average sized people who are a little bit shorter. So probably just a little bit shorter than me. I'm about 5'4", so they're probably about like 5'1". The Ruby Slippers are actually silver. There are actually a lot more monsters that Dorothy meets, and she also goes to the city made of China, which I would totally love to go to. Saying it, somebody make it, I will go and visit. Disney, do it. And the final difference, the flying monkeys really aren't evil. There's actually a magical cap that when the Wicked Witch had a hold of it, she had control over them, so they came off as evil, but when Dorothy got a hold of it, they were all nice again because they weren't being controlled. So. If you ever had nightmares about those flying monkeys, I'll let you know that this book will actually make them look a lot nicer. So yeah, those are just some of the other differences that you find in the book that really changed around the plot. You end up having a different look on all the characters. And I'm not really sure why they decided to make the shoes red instead of silver in the movie. Maybe because they stood out better. Or they had a lot of red sequins and glitter and they're like, oh, let's use red instead of silver. Yeah. That could be possible. If you haven't read The Wonderful Wizard of Oz, check it out. It's a classic. It's a real quick, easy read. You could probably do it in about two days. If you have kids, read it to your kids. Or if they can read it, have them read it to you. So then you can hear it and you can, you know, make your own judgments and see how much you love it or hate it. It's a fun series to really get into because you end up having a total of 14 books in The Wonderful World of Oz series. I myself have read the first six on top of the 14 books written by L. Frank Baum. You have the books written by other authors that have been inspired by the books and the world of Oz. So that's it on Sammy J Reads. If you have read The Wonderful Wizard of Oz, go ahead and comment down below. If you've read any of the series, comment down below. If you've read one written from an author other than L. Frank Baum, comment down below. Let me know what you thought, you hated, you liked, anything. I actually enjoy talking to you. Everyone who commented on the Warded Man review, I was like, oh, people to talk to. If you want to see more book reviews, I post every Thursday, so clickety-clack that subscribe button up above. Yes, I just made a Philip DeFranco reference. And I will see you guys every Thursday in your inbox. So yeah, totally. High five. Woo! Finally, if you have a book that you want me to read, review, and do the whole shebang, go ahead, comment down below, leave me a message, do whatever you want to let me know. If you want, you can check out, I've got a Goodreads profile, which I will link down below. And you can check out what people have recommended for me to read, what I have read, what I'm currently reading. And yeah, you can go that route too if you want, if you have an account, friend me there, anything, whatever. And yeah, I'll check it out. A bunch of you requested to review The Name of the Wind, which sort of turns out I was reading it when I <laughs> posted the review from last week. So I'm working on it, I'm trying to get through it, I'm currently sort of caught up in a sewing project because I've got a convention I'm going to in the next couple weeks. So if anything, I will have that book done by next month. So that's it on Sammy J Reads, and I'll see you guys on the other side of the book. Bye! We should like be totally best friends, you know, like besties. Let's be besties. We could make like forts and we could sew costumes and I could like read The Daylight Warrior while you're writing it and I could totally give you like total inspiration. 
Okay, that sounded creepy. 